Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to be reviewing the new project by Blade and Echo 2K called Crest. Both Blade and Echo 2K are Swedish artists that have been making music together and as well as that with similar producers for over 10 years now um, under the name Drain Gang. Now although Blade and Echo 2K have their own very distinct musical styles, they actually both followed a very similar musical trajectory throughout the music they've been releasing. They started off as basically being pioneers of the subgenre emo rap as well as cloud rap, having very uh, similar topics such as materialism and wealth, uh, emotional despair, isolation and depression, topics such as that, happy things, you know, but ended up basically creating a total stylistic shift. Now they're making music which is far, far more happy and vibrant and have been doing this for a good few years now. Now, I certainly wouldn't consider myself a drink gang historian or anything like that, but I would personally put my money down on this stylistic change happening on a 2019 track both Blade and Echo 2K were on, a track called Vanilla Sky. This is a very euphoric and very beautiful track that begins not only this sort of empowering lyrical topic, but also seems to me at least debut Echo 2K's sudden change in vocal delivery to be a lot more androgynous. This certainly was a surprise considering a year before this Blade had the 2018 record Red Light which was very gloomy and melancholic and because of this had similar vocal uh, styles because the vocals were a lot more deeper on this project. Now flash forward to present day and these guys now have a good number of projects under the belt which fits the bill of happy sort of music particularly looking at Blade with his recent project Good Luck, which was pretty much all electro-pop, and Echo 2K, for example, released a single not too long ago called Pollen, which could have easily fit the bill of being a long-forgotten 60s psychedelic folk record. And now we have the project Crest, which continues this spiritual ideology these guys have expressed in their music, and to me at least, in my opinion, have done it in their most successful attempt yet and has became one of my favourite projects Drain Gang in general have released. Now if you know quite a bit about Drain Gang, you would know that these guys are a very close-knitted group. They do very, very sparse collaborations and features on other people's projects, usually sticking with their own team, especially the producers. And typically producers that work on a project will be on every single track on a project. And this is once again the case on Crest, not only also being yet again a surprise drop, but also features White Armour too, which is someone who's worked with these guys for ages now. Uh, in my opinion as well, this is some of the best, if not the best, production that White Armour has done in general. By saying that White Armour is showing off all the bells and whistles would kind of be an understatement, because on here he's literally using bells and whistle sounds on here. Yes, he is using a lot of sound effects too, uh, a lot of drum patterns which can either go from fast paced to steady depending on what sort of song topic it is about, and overall it's just fantastic. Sticking with the sound effects in particular, I think this is where I can argue that White Armour um, is using these sound effects to help create the picture that Blade and Echo 2 k are trying to create on this album. Now, yes, I think Cryptic is a word you could use for any sort of song that these guys have released, especially as of late. Um, a lot of their music can be up to interpretation, most definitely. Uh, so this is where I'll throw my two coins in and say that to me this project overall is, yes, spiritual ideology, but I think the importance of retaining a childlike wonder and perspective on life in general. I feel this is the case not only on the literal cartoon effects that are scattered throughout this project, but the sounds of lambs and kittens that is used on here. And of course we can't forget this album cover, which looks, it looks like the guys just snuck into their local primary school, elementary school if you want, and just nicked, you know, young Timmy's art project and classed that as the album cover. 
Now, I'm not making that as a diss by any means to this project because like I say I think it fits the theme but at the same time I'm certain that it's intentional because if the guys wanted I'm sure they could get a very detailed album cover a la Blades 333 for example if they wanted. Echo 2K is very like I say androgynous and very sort of youthful boyish vocal delivery that's used frequently on this album but obviously the lyrical topics too. Lyrical topics such as the Virgin Mary, nature and just a lot of archaic descriptions uh, particularly arrowheads which is talked about throughout this project. I don't know why but it's really unique and I just think it's really cool. And the head of a fountain and I don't know what that is about. Uh, again, it's all about interpretation, but to me, this might be a reference to The Fountainhead, which is a classic novel, which um, his main topic is all about individualism. And to me, these guys talk about that in spades. Another huge topic is death. And this is not new grounds for these guys. They've talked about death and wanting to die a lot. Uh, but whereas the older projects was done so in a lot more of a pessimistic outlook. It's almost like these guys are embracing death as if they just have transcended and have became immortal beings. Uh, something about that which again I just find that's quite just surreal which this music is often the case. But forgetting all of this topics aside and blah blah blah, are the songs themselves enjoyable? And to me, I would give a resounding yes. So Blade and Echo 2K have seemed to show this preference to start the projects recently in a very slow and woozy and uh, enveloping uh, intro track or something like that. But that is certainly not the case on this project, which starts off with the track The Flag Is Raised. This is a very immediate attention grabbing and overall peppy track. And what makes this track particularly catchy is not only the fantastic melodies both these guys come up with but at the same time how the had the idea of having echo 2k's feature always come in with an extra beat at the same time which again makes it not only contrast well with blades features on this track but just again adds to the catchiness the second track begins in a lot more spacious style with a lot of reverberated vocals and glistening synthesizers and just out of nowhere completely changes. Out of nowhere we get this Nokia ringtone type beat and as well as this some really warped and strange vocals from Blade and it's pretty mind-blowing but what's gonna blow your mind twice is the fact that this track is nine minutes long nearly uh, very easily becoming one of the if not the longest track that Drain Gang in general have ever released and not only is it an epic in size, but it is in proportions, because I could see this becoming probably a Drain Gang Fang's favourite track ever by these guys, or at least would have to be up there. It's became up there for me at least. This song's called Five Star Crest, and whether or not this is a link to the five mini songs that are kind of in this track, that transition so well within each other and all of great quality, it almost acts like a Drain Gang DJ mix, and the way it sounds and it's stylized is basically the opposite in nature and style to something like Death Grips' Steroids. This multifaceted track will make you overall want to dance, it'll make you want to cry, and it'll make you want to transcend. And you'll especially probably want to cry on the fourth mini track where Blade is saying, Give it to me raw, death is beautiful. That moment, oof, hits hard man, hits hard. Similarly emotionally potent tracks is, for example, the synth-pop track Faust, which is again very beautiful and yet emotionally impactful for me, um, especially the imagery that Blade once again conveys on this track. Suffering stops, bodies drop, flowers sprout, bloom, die and rot. Track Chaos Follows is again very emotionally driven and very impactful for me too. Uh, again, I've got to go with Blade and his verse that's on here where he manages to convey this really anthemic style which not only could I imagine it being in some sort of great pop punk tune especially with the sort of Weezer say it in so reference but wow could you just imagine hearing this song in front of a live audience and the whole audience joining in on this bit it would be absolutely phenomenal. 
Again, I've got to give a shout out to White Armour's production on here, which for the most part are absolute hits. Um, for example, I'll give a shout out to Heaven Sings, the last track on here, which has these manipulated choral vocals. And it just sounds like something David Wise would have used in the original Donkey Kong Country trilogy uh, games. And something for that for me is just awesome. And again, I've got to give another shout out to Chaos Follows, which has these great woozy synthesizers, which contrast really well with these very bombastic and just really um, overwhelming percussion that's used too on it. I mean, I've just realised I totally forgot about the song Girls Just Wanna Have Fun. Uh, this is actually quite an old track for these guys. It was released, I believe, in 2020. Um, but this has been a staple of great Dream Gang song. Um, it's not actually that unusual for them to put on old songs on projects. Like I know, for example, Blade had a song called Frosty the Snowman, which uh, nearly a year later ended up becoming um, one of the tracks of Ice Dancer. Um, so I'm not really bothered about older tracks appearing on albums, especially since it was only one out of nine, and especially because this is such a cool song. Especially, got to give a shout out to Echo 2K here, who's just... The vocals on here are just impeccable and just awe-inspiring. You know, and for negatives, uh, they're really few and far between. Like, for example, the fifth track, Yes S, uh, Blade's hook on here, which is just really him just saying yes a lot of times. It's a bit derivative, and at the same time, it's kind of got a very similar sound to the Fool intro of his Fool album. Uh, so I think he was just covering similar grounds there. And for me, the song Desire is a Trap, I don't know, it's, it's a bit too repetitive, and I think the whole thing just sounds a bit too squeaky, especially the instrumental. So, yeah, but that's just me. So yeah, like, other than reverting to nitpicking, I can't really fault this project that much. Like, overall, the songs are of that good quality, and I just enjoy it that much. This would actually be up there with one of my favourite Dream Gang projects. In fact, it probably is on par with Blades ever since, and is just a hair behind the project Ice Dancer, um, which is my favourite thing that they've done in one of my favourite projects ever. Um, so definitely, at least for me, this project is one of my favourites they've ever done. Now, if you've not been a fan of this new, happier sounding Dream Gang, uh, style. Would you be a fan of this project? I mean, maybe not, but I think you should still give it a shot despite this. And if you are a fan of this style, and in general if you've never tried them before, but you like happy sounding synth pop, sort of pop rap music, then this is an absolute must listen in my opinion. I'm going to give this project a, a really strong 8 out of 10. It's just teetering on a 9. In fact, I think it will reach a 9 out of 10 with subsequent listens. So that's it everybody, thank you very much for watching, hope you're taking care of yourselves, bye for now. Thanks for listening.